from you all. You all want to hear from folks and doctoral students who are navigating the process, who have worked with us in the Velocity Coaching Program. So we wanted to highlight some of our uh, clients in, in this series on client success about how they you know, navigate the process, what they've been able to do uh, as they've been going through their programs, and then also some insights for you as a viewer on how you too can achieve success while getting through the dissertation process. Um, I'm Dr. Ramon Goings. I'm host of the show and founder of Dunn Dissertation, where our goal is to demystify the dissertation process so that you can write and defend your dissertation in one year or less. Today's episode is sponsored by the Dunn Dissertation Velocity Coaching Program. Our coaching program has the goal to help you over the course of one year or less write and defend your dissertation. So if you're someone that's looking to get through the process that wants to earn their doctorate and then leverage your doctorate after, Make sure that you reach out to us. You can learn more about our program and to apply to schedule a consultation with us if you go to www.velocitydissertation.com. If you're watching this live, go ahead and drop uh, the link in the comments for folks that are coming behind you on the replay. And thank you all in advance. So for today's episode, um, and before we get into today's episode, also I want to talk about uh, HBCU Smart TV, who has been a supporter of Dunn Dissertation and the work that we have going on. So if you're interested in learning more, uh, go to hbcusmarttv.com. They also stream all of our episodes of our show. And so you can go there as well to watch on your Roku device. And so before we get into this, I want to introduce our client guest for today because uh, this person, you know, if you all know about my background, I uh, was a former music educator. So anytime I get to have clients in our program who are also music educators, it's something that uh, brings a lot of joy because I like to see a lot of us out here getting their doctorates and doing great things. And so uh, our client success that we're going to talk about today is with uh, Nathan Webb, who's currently a doctoral candidate um, at William Patterson University. And so I want to bring him on to talk about his research, his work, and the things he's been able to do with his doctorate. So let's welcome Nathan. Nathan, thanks so much for being on. I appreciate you. Yes, thank you so much. So I want to get into it because a lot of folks, right, they, you know, go into these doctoral programs, and they always have a goal at the beginning of this thing. And so sometimes as we go through the process, we lose sight of the goal. But you know, when you decide to, you know, go into your doctoral program, you know, what made you do that and decide to pursue this in the first place? That's a good question. I actually began my academic career wanting to obtain a doctor's degree, even back when I was in high school, mm -hmm. maybe even before that in middle school. My mother's father, he obtained his master's degree and he had a plan of being a doctor, but took a year off and then during that year he was drafted into the Korean War so he didn't have the opportunity to actually go back and get his doctorate. I mean by the time the war was over or his service was done he you know, started a family and all of that and I think that's as close as we've gotten as a family of someone obtaining a doctorate degree. So I've always had that goal set um, and, and, and I like school <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, so I think that's pretty much been the the back the background there in regards to uh, the the doctorate process. Yeah, and so you know, as you were making your transition into the doctoral program, you know, like in my experience, it was very difficult to make that transition in terms of the writing and all those things. Like, how did you make the transition into the doctoral program to like catch up with how to do this academic writing and the reading requirements, all those things? What was that journey like for you starting out? It was a lot because this doctoral degree is the only non-music degree <laughs> that, that I'll have. So everything else, you know, undergrad and grad, there was lesson components, there were ensembles in there. Um, even with the master's degree, I mean, I took lessons during that, um, you know, analytical techniques. So all of these things which are extremely difficult, but it was totally different than all the reading and writing that's demanded upon for this degree. Right. So I think the main transitionary piece was just understanding the time that needed to be set aside for the degree. And at the beginning, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I struggled. Um, I, 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 I struggled a lot, actually. Um, but I think just committing, um, understanding what it takes, and, and just starting to sacrifice a few things. I know that at the house, um, I ended up hiring someone to do a little bit of landscaping service. Yeah. I, I hired someone to, um, to take care of like you know so some of the things i typically do and it, it was it was kind of hard to do that because i i take pride in, in you know doing the household things but you know those things take time so especially during the cherishable summers and you know times where i'm off from my teaching job i needed to devote that especially the first couple of years of the doctoral program so 
making that transition, not, I hate to say it, but not attending every party, knowing how to say no, knowing how to be just a little bit selfish and coordinating it with my wife because my wife is also in a doctoral program. So for us being able to do that has been helpful. But I, I must applaud my wife because she understood it because she's also going through the same process of right. getting the degrees. So I think if I wasn't with my wife and I was with someone who didn't understand, it would probably be a lot more challenging. That, that makes sense. And so, you, you know, you all coordinate your schedules. And so when as you're going to coursework, right, in particular, how what was your cadence like to getting work done? Were you someone that like worked in the evenings? Did you do stuff in the, at just weekends? Like what did that look like for you starting out? Well, starting out is much different than what I ended up settling into. Starting sure. out, gotcha. I, I thought I could be a weekend warrior. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't work at this level. Yeah. It just simply doesn't work. Um, but eventually I ended up trying to just, just chop a little bit off each day. And I think it was after work, get home, eat a little something, sometimes even take a short nap. Like if I, if I'm able to get home by four, four 30, eat by five, maybe sit down for, for an hour, lay down for an hour and then get back up maybe like six to nine, six to 10, you know, do, go to the library and do studies. I, I'm, I'm fortunate that I only live about 10 minutes from the university. So uh, I spent a lot of time just, just going to the library, actually removing myself from the house and actually just take the time to be in the environment. Got you. And let me ask you something, because I'm giving you a background in music. This this is how I used to use my music skills, like to tune out things. So I'm used to being in an ensemble, I could tune out everything and just hear what I need to hear. Hmm. So like in terms of your work, uh, where you worked, like were you able to, I know you say you do a lot at the library, but could you work other places while you were doing your coursework? Or was it just you need to be in the same type of environment to to be successful? Yeah, I think with the music mind, every sound, I mean, I can't even, I can only listen to classical music when I do this. So yep. I, I, I couldn't do this at work, you know, during my preps and stuff, because there's, there's just always noise and there's always things happening. Um, and even at the house, even if I'm in this room by myself, um, if I hear something happening in the living room or if I hear things upstairs, it's hard. So I, you know, I'll just yeah. take it upon myself to get up, get out, go to the library. Um, and, and that's what works for me. You know, and I, I know other people, they can go to Starbucks and go to a coffee shop, but it just doesn't work for me. Gotcha. Yeah. I was like, try to showcase that when we do these, like, uh, with our clients, because everybody has a different work cadence and how they work. And I always like to highlight because everybody has their own route to it. Cause I think sometimes students want to be like, oh, I need to have and adopt this particular method in order to be successful. But it's like, there's so many approaches to you know, having a great work environment. And what you found what yours is going to the library, having quiet. Um, I do second that classical music. Like I can't, to this day, I can't listen to anything. It has to be non, no words. So I can do like up-tempo music, but it just can't have any words. Cause I used to type the words I was hearing, like the subconsciously, oh, wow. like it would start coming into what I was <laughs> typing. And so I, I had to take, I removed words out of my, uh, uh, anytime I was trying to do some writing, I had to remove words from the music. Yeah, and, and for me, as a jazz major, it, it I couldn't even listen to jazz because I'll just mm. be just immersed into the music and, and then I'll just lose focus. So uh, gotcha. there's something about classical. I mean, I love classical music as well. You know, I, I played in symphonies and all that, but it's something about that music to where I could I could just let that be in the background mm -hmm. and to just soothe, soothe the process. Oh, got you. That's cool. And so, you know, you go through your coursework thing, you start to get, a, you know, get in the hang of things. And then it comes to now writing your dissertation. Mm -hmm. and so... For many students, they feel like, hey, I've had this structure of coursework, but then I get to the dissertation, it's kind of like I'm lacking the structure that I once had during courses. Did you have a similar experience or like was that different for you when you were got to the dissertation part of the process? I think the issue for me with the dissertation process was just the overload. Mm. Because for uh, William Patterson, it's a three-year degree and we're starting segments of the dissertation on day one. Mm -hmm. And I think it was towards the end of the full first year. So we started in the summer, fall, spring. By the end of that spring, we were expected to have a draft of the first chapter. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> I'm still trying to catch up on, you know, the coursework. Yeah. Sure. And, and so each semester we have uh, a three credit course, a three credit course, and then a one credit uh, for the dissertation. So it's seven credits uh, each semester. And, you know, just taking the two doctoral level courses at the same time, that was that was more than enough for me, you know, and especially the, the semester we did the and I think it was that spring semester. Uh, we had a class called the four pillars. It was talked about Ed Law, 
talked about the finances, oh, yeah. and it, it, it was it was heavy, heavy reading, heavy reading, like a hundred pages at least a week, and you know, so so to be able to do that, analyze, synthesize, bring in your own resources as well, and then do your own your own study on the side. I was like, okay, <laughs> so yeah, so I, that's I needed help at that point um, because I, I fell behind. Um, my, my colleagues. And I'll never forget this experience like that, that summer after the first full year, we're starting this year two, um, the head of the program brought in a writing consultant to look at our chapter one and chapter two. And I didn't really have anything. And I was so embarrassed. Like everyone else, they're meeting with them. You know, they're getting this free consultation. And I just like, man, I don't have anything. You know, so. And I just had to make that decision. You know, I was like, okay, am, am I going to prolong this? Because of course the university has options to where you could continue to, to purchase courses to, to just stay in the program. And, but I, I just, I needed help, you know? And I think that was um, around the time that I was starting to, to think about, you know, reaching out to, to getting some consulting and coaching. Yeah, because I remember, I think you're associate dean or someone I met at a con. We I had met through another channel, and then we met at a conference. You were, you came that you were at that conference that particular yeah. year, and then that's when I was a little bit before you joined the program. But I remember you saying like, "Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to get this thing. I got a timeline I want to get done, but I'm not quite sure how I'm going to reach that timeline right at this point in time." You know, so I said, yeah. it seemed like you were going through that, and you know, what made you decide to even, you know, it gets to a point where some students say, "All right, I'm going to figure it out," and then others will say, "You know, I can figure it out, but I also need some support." And so, you know, you were experiencing the setbacks. What, what, what finally made you say, all right, I'm going to go ahead and actually explore this as an option? I think it was the announcement that my wife was pregnant. I think that was the, uh, <laughs> it's like, uh oh, you're going to be a, you're going to be a father. You're going to be a dad. You got to get this done yeah. because yeah, things are going to get really, 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 you know, involved with, with, with him. So yeah, so we met Dr. Goins. It was February of last year at yep. the AACTE, and it was with um, Dr. Fuentes, the, our yep. associate dean of William Patterson yep. Education. And I, I you know, I, I was asking questions. I was probably being a bit annoying, <laughs> like saying, "Okay, so can, you, can you really help me with this?" You know, I'm doing a self study. I'm doing music education, and you're like, "Yeah, I think I can help." <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, that was that. I mean, basically, it, it came down to understanding that the 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 program's going to end you know in may and babies do you know october of 2023 mm -hmm. and the program ends in may of 2024 basically you have to defend by april and i'm still messing around chapters one something with chapter two but it was not really aligned well it just wasn't together and yeah so i think it was at, at that point i think I started messaging you on um, on LinkedIn. I, I started to watch the, this show. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And and I, I I reached out to you, and, and I, or maybe you even reached out to me. Um, but anyway, it was it was a great um, connection. It, it happened at the perfect time for me, uh, and I'm so glad that we were able to make this happen. Yeah, because now I mean, like you came in and got to work, and like that stuff was happening fast. I mean, you were able to knock out your proposal pretty quickly. You just waited on feedback, you know. On that's part yeah. of the process too. Is like sometimes you wait longer on feedback, and it takes you to actually do the work to, you know, get this thing through. And so, what shifted for you? You know, where had you been stuck before you joined? You decided to join the program, and then things started to move forward for you. What do you think was something that you did or happened for you to make that transition? I think it was just the community that it's the community that you have in place within your system, being able to to listen and to watch other um, candidates, their experience of what they're going through. Yeah, I think when I joined, there were a few that were towards the end of the process, but then there are also several that were towards the beginning um, and in the you know proposal stage. But I, I was just you know looking up to those who were like past that stage, you know, the chapters four, chapter five, preparing for the final defense. I'm like, okay, this is possible. You know, this is, this is wonderful. And then of course, um, the, the personalized feedback, when you, when you go and you do the video and you give a detailed track changes, um, even offering possible suggestions, 
um, to get me on the right path. I think that, I mean, it, it was, it was a game changer, that was a complete game changer, you know, and, you know, m my chair and, and the university, they, they do wonderful things. And I'm so thankful for, you know, everyone at William Patterson. Um, but adding that extra, that extra personalized coach, it, it's exactly what turned everything around. Um, it, it just allowed me to clearly understand things. And I think you even provided one of my frameworks, the, um, Cultural response of music education. I, I I remember having the conversation yeah. with you, and you were able to actually find that on the spot. And then I was like, "Oh, this is perfect." I was able to plug it right in, you know. So I think, you know, being able to to just have that extra set of eyes and ears, especially someone who's been there, done that multiple times over, um, it allowed me to to truly understand the concepts. And, and I think another thing for me it was understanding the concept of how to get the job done right, yeah. as opposed to the concept of trying to turn this into a, a life-changing experience for everyone on planet earth so i think that was you know two, two major things there yeah no that that's that's perfect and like yeah you made your study manageable because it is just like right so the, something that you could accomplish and then you know you had the little one on the way so like thinking about all those things in particular like you, you were able to work this timeline out perfect where essentially you had it lined up we're able to defend your proposal what kind of collector data just before the baby was born? Just about almost done with everything. Were you done with data collection right before or right at? I don't remember it, where you were in that. It, it was like a little bit of both. It, it yeah. was it was a little bit before, um, and then I took a, a short leave of five weeks, and then when I came back, just finished all that up. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it was great. Um, being able to basically, yeah, like you said, proposal done before the baby, and then after the baby, it was the. Uh, basically taking care of chapters four and five. Yeah. And so for the audience that are watching, like essentially at the time of this recording, uh, Nathan's about two weeks out from a defense. So just so y'all have kind of idea of the time frame. So I was able to kind of wrap this up within, you know, what's what, four or five? I think right? I joined at, the, was it the beginning of June or the end of May is when I first yeah. joined. Yeah. And then, yeah. So I was like May through, I think it was through August or so. Yeah. And then I took a break because yep. I, I wanted to save <laughs> so yeah. some of the time. Yeah. If you have time to collect data, like we always tell folks, like pause while you're collecting data. You don't need us to collect data. Go collect your data and then come back after that's all done. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah, you 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 work the process how it's supposed to go. And so you know, extremely extremely happy for you and what you're able to do. And now you know you're getting ready to uh, approach defense. And one thing I want to go back to actually with your dissertation is like, how did you handle you know? the feedback with your chair and in committee. So I know a lot of students are like apprehensive about submitting their work because they're like, oh, we're going to get all this feedback, have this back and forth. So like, how are you able to navigate that? Because um, it seems like you established a really good rapport and relationship with your chair. Yeah. Um, yeah. Process. And I think for the one of the biggest compliments to this program is that chapter two, which for some was the most daunting chapter. And, and for me, too, for actually writing it. Yeah. But by the time it got to the chair, she said, it's so good. I really don't have anything to say. Yeah, I mean, she that. had two or three things on yeah, yeah. this for a 40 page chapter. And I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, I remember that because it was a, I remember when you submitted your work. I think it was like a couple of tweaks you need to make that was just consistent throughout the document. Mm -hmm. I think once you made those tweaks, it was right, it was really ready to go. So I'm glad that happened for you. Yeah, yeah. So I think that was like, that was a miracle because I was <laughs> expecting to go back and you know, figure that out. Because I remember the first time I was trying to figure out chapter two, I, I submitted to her what I had. And, and and she's like, you know, this is good, but a lot of this needs to go into chapter one. I'm like, mm. oh, well, <laughs> now I have nothing for chapter two. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, but but like I said, once, once I was able to actually understand the concept, go through the, your curriculum and go through what the university was wanting and, and how they wanted us to structure it, um, put those two together, then you know, it, it's, it's clear, you know, it, it, it's, you have it or you don't. So I just wanted to make sure that I had it and that everything was, you know, clear. I mean, and I think that's the main thing about the writing too. It's just, is it clear? Yeah. Because, a lot, you know, it's a lot, you know, the content is heavy. You have so, so many pages. So I'm, I'm assuming all the readers, they just want to make sure that we point A connects to point B to C to D and, I think that's one thing that I've been able to learn through this process. And I yeah. think prior to this program, 
my writing might have been all over the place, have all these wonderful ideas, sure. but just really wasn't executing it in a concise, direct manner. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I think that's one of the biggest things that as, as someone who chairs doctoral students, yeah, that's a, we just need clear thoughts, right? And so I remember I was a student, I used to get this feedback, my professor, I used to hate it, but I understood now what he's saying. He's like, Ramon, you're out complexing yourself. Like mm. the stuff is already complex. Like don't make, don't write it in a way that makes it under, like confusing to us as the reader. And so, yeah, you definitely latched on and be able to, you were able to take that kind of concept and apply it to your writing. And so now that you're preparing, you know, for to wrap up your your doctoral program, what does life look like now once you are Dr. Webb? And what do, what do you want to do with this degree? Because I know some students are figuring out, well, what the heck do I do with it? I did all this work to get it. Now, what do I want to do with it? Yeah, I mean, I feel that I'm in a good position because ultimately a lot of doors will be unlocked. Yeah. I love my job. I love teaching. I teach at a middle school and my my dissertation talks about that. It's not, I'm actually doing a self-study, so it refers to my teaching environment. And I've, I've been a middle school music teacher for this is my 13th year. So I love the position I, and I could see myself doing that for many more years. But at the same time, I am interested in supervision. I would love to be um, a district level music administrator or uh, art supervisor or director or you know something of that nature, or whatever I mean, position. I mean, that's what your dissertation there. was about. I mean, even in that case, being the context of what you were studying. I mean, I think exactly, that would make perfect yeah. sense. And then you know, at the same time, I also could see myself being a building administrator, you know, mm -hmm. a VP or a principal. That's something that I would be open to. And in addition to that, I, I could see myself doing going to the university setting. I'm actually currently. Uh, teaching just just one one adjunct class at William Patterson actually okay. right now, um, and I'm I'm teaching um, it's, it's called practicum seminar. Basically, music educators are in their first stage of student teaching. It's just okay, a yeah. one day a week placement, and able to hear their experiences and just just be able to have a seminar to where we're talking and going through resources and just trying to help them out. So I mean, there are just so many possibilities out there, and I think not necessarily needing one right away because i like i said i'm happy where i'm at so i'm just just sit back keep my eyes open i'll probably start networking more i think that's something that yeah. maybe i could replace the time that i've been doing all of this writing <laughs> to maybe start building my linkedin yeah um start um you know just 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 attending more events yeah and doing things like that i think that's i mean seriously what i would like to do with my time and i think that will just open up more opportunities and for the future and and also I, I would like to take that dissertation and, and and hopefully produce some articles out of it. I think that um, there, there's there's some good stuff in there, and maybe even trying to to broaden the spectrum. Yeah. Um. I was recently at um, I presented my dissertation at an event uh, for 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 one of the major conferences, and it was interesting to understand that. Okay, so my topic is on diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, and the, out of the four judges on the panel, three of them were from either Texas or Florida. So they were like, well, this doesn't relate to us. We can't do anything with that. And it's just so interesting how, you know, being able to understand that there's there's so much out there, even just within the United States, yeah. of trying to be able to align your research um, to different geographical areas. So I, I think there's, there's so much that can be done uh, with my study. And even to put my study out there, to, to to maybe advocate more towards what you know I don't want to get political but but to advocate more to what could be happening as a country as a whole you know yeah, yeah. to recognize differences and to be able to to teach such yeah um, but you know like I said I, I will leave, I'll stay out of that lane yeah yeah no that <laughs> makes sense in, in terms of what your dissertation was about and especially the music side of like how, if you're in a particular state that does not support DEI initiatives, how do you teach music in a way is still addressing some of these things that you want to address through your work? So it's very interesting. Yeah, your work definitely has a lot of implications for other spaces. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of opportunity Dr. Webb gets to uh, have with uh, you know exploring those those topics. And so uh, before we wrap up, a couple of things I do want to ask about is what advice would you give for you know doctoral students? Or actually, first I'll take it for you. What advice would you give yourself two years ago who was stuck 
-hmm. what advice would you give yourself now look knowing that you've gone through this process looking back at where you were a couple of years ago when you might have felt like stuck or not hitting the progress that you wanted to what advice would you give yourself now there is no shame for asking for help getting guidance even within my own cohort I was not very good at actually like reaching out to people. I think it was a sense of pride, a sense of like, you know, you should be able to do this. You got accepted into this program, just work harder. And I think it, it took it took a while for me to like understand like, it's okay, ask for help. I, I remember the first time I went to the library, I went to the reference desk and I just said, hey, can you help me just find some articles for, for this lit review? And boom. <laughs> Uh, you know, a world was open to me just by asking a simple question. Yeah. You know, and, and then like watching how the person was able to actually navigate through the database and, and okay, so that's how you, you know, I, I was just not typing in the right thing and, you know, using other words, you know, yep. and it just opened up a whole world that I didn't even know. And I wouldn't have known if I wouldn't have asked for help. So I think that's my biggest thing mm -hmm. is my just to ask for help. And the second piece that, you know, as I alluded to at the beginning of this interview is it's like, you know, you got to, the scheduling is important. A routine is so important. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a different level, a different level of, of academics. You know, I think through high school and even through undergrad, you know, I was able to allow my strengths in music to kind of just push me through everything else. Sure. And, and I had some, some ill advice. I remember when I was like a senior high school, I was taking drum lessons and one of my professors said, yeah, you know, you know, you, you're a music major, so all you need to get are D's in the other classes, you know, and, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know why, but that like, I'm OK, so nothing else really matters. Yes, yeah, you know, so I just yeah. allowed I allowed my strengths to, to carry me through undergrad and whatnot. But, you know, one, once you get to master's and once you get to, and even in undergrad, I had to I had to, to like pick that out. Right, right, um, right. But definitely at the doctoral level, that that is no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> you you have to you have to put in the work. You have to put in the work. Yeah. And so another thing I want to touch on is like you know, in the midst of writing your dissertation and doing data collection, you have a little one. So what does what did life or how did life change once you had the little one come into the picture? So like, how did you rethink scheduling and making sure you got still got stuff done and you know being a dad and navigating? Because I know. I know for me that was a big transition as well once we had our little one. So I was wondering how what did you do to what structure did you put in place for that? Yeah, I think it was a good tag team effort mm -hmm. between me and my wife. She's also in a doctoral program and she's working on her dissertation as well. So um for us both to have time, you know, to work on our paper, both to have time together as a family, yeah. and you know, both to have time to bond with our son. Um so being able to navigate that. I mean, again, I've taken time off from work to be able to navigate this. So my, my son has been a blessing in so many ways. Obviously, yes. just just being here on earth and being able uh, to allow my wife and I to be his parents, it's a huge blessing. And we're so thankful for that. But he has also given me um, a legitimate reason to take FMLA and, and to yeah. take time off from, from work. Um, I'm actually, I'm going to, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be able to defend my dissertation and then just go in the following week um, nice oh that's so, perfect that's a great side i didn't realize the time it was working just it, off. it, it was perfect. Per perfect timing you know yeah. and i was able to uh, they gave me 12 weeks fmla's 12 weeks yeah and then i was able to coordinate it with the end of fmla um <laughs> in ending at the beginning of spring break yeah so i get that 13th week and then I was able to, I just spoke to my administrator, being able to tack on one more week that I'll use of sick time. In the state of New Jersey, they just announced that you can use sick time for caring for family members too. So, nice. I mean, it, it, so it, it's all legitimate. I'm not, I'm not doing anything sneaky and I'm yeah, sure, about right? it. You got to use the policy and, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that, you know, for my son, I mean, of course, I mean, he's, he has, um, been a lot to handle in regards to having another person being able to, to, to take care of his needs. But yeah. at the same time, he's, he's afforded me so much time to get this study done. Yeah. And it, it, it's been wonderful. And he's been wonderful. He sleeps through the night after the first, I would say six weeks, he started sleeping through the night. Yeah. yeah, That's, that's a blessing. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. I remember my wife, she got this, um, it's called the magic sleep sack. Okay. And you know, he's like a little, it's like a heavy, 
sex that keeps them doing that reflex thing yeah. that babies do. And, you know, we, we give them a bath every night and a bottle right after that, put him in the sleep sack, put him down around 10 p.m. and he's up around seven. And it's been like that since since wow. mid-December. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, that's a blessing. So, you know, I'm glad to hear that you're able to set all that up and have the support and do all those things. That's that's perfect. That's perfect. And so um, the last question I have for you is like, what advice would you get to doctoral students right now who are stuck in the process and maybe some insights of things that have worked for you that you can you know pass along to those who are coming behind you? Yeah, I mean, if you feel that there's a need, definitely seek out help and, and, and get a coach. I, 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 I highly recommend it. You know, and I feel that the investment, financial investment that you put towards it, it, it does two things. Number one, when you pay for something like this, you certainly want to make sure that you're using the resources that are provided for you. And then number two, you're able to get through the program. So you're not spending that money on, you know, classes that you don't need to take. So I 100% recommend, I, I mean, I recommend this program. I, I recommend Dunn Dissertation. I feel that um, it's inspiring to be able to see the progress of the other members of, of, of all the other candidates, the doctoral candidates, and, and to just see all these beautiful people who are in all fields of, of academia, you know, researching. And it's, it's inspiring um, for, for me to see that. But, but then to also get, like I said, get that personalized feedback. It, it's not generic. And I, I believe Dr. Goins, like he, if he needed to do some sort of research to figure out what he needed to give me, he would do that um, to, to give me something that was specific to my needs. I know that the self-study method of inquiry is, I don't know anyone else in, within my cohort or any of the other um, networks that I've been in. I don't know anyone else who's doing that type of a methodology. So being able to get personalized feedback within the study that I'm doing has been very valuable. So, you know, the the investment's 100 percent worth it. I, I I I can say I've already made my money back because I'm not going to have to pay for the summer semester. I won't have to pay for the fall of 2024 semester, which I'm pretty sure that if I would not have joined this, I would have to do, do at least that much. Yeah. <laughs> at least, if not a whole other year. So I mean, if so, if you add all that up, I mean, I, I probably saved fifteen thousand dollars of tuition. So that, that more than takes care of the. Um, the fee for getting the coach. So yeah, that, that would be my biggest advice. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's so impactful and things to consider because a lot of folks like they hear about the investment and they kind of back off some people. And I'm just mm -hmm. like, no, it's like a return on your investment. It's like all thinking about like if the faster I finish this degree, the tuition dollar cuts off and it's zero. You know, as soon as y'all are done, it's no more of that. And so uh, the way you thought through that is is perfect. And like, yeah, we want people to like make sure like, you know, not only that, but then if you because you have your doctorate, now you have a lot of different opportunities, the music administrator role of, you know, vice principal, principalship, higher ed, like there's so many other lanes that you can recoup your investment very easily now with the doctorate. So yeah. super, super proud of you um, for knocking this thing out and finishing it with quicker. You know, now you're right on target with the cohort. I know you initially were like, I'm a little bit behind. Now everybody's finishing up yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, next week we will um, have, I think about three or four of our cohort members, uh, they, they will do their dissertation on the, the week of the twenty the 25th. And then the following week, I think we have a few, and then I'm on the week of the uh, the 8th. I'm on my dissertation defense is on the 9th. Yep. So yeah, we're, we're all in this together, you know? And I, I'm super proud of, of our cohort because we are the first cohort um, with this degree of leadership at William Patterson University. Right. So the, we are the very first. and. I believe that all 11 of us will graduate. So I, I didn't want to be left behind. So yeah. <laughs> it was it was very crucial for me to actually, you know, get, get help and, and, get, and get the job done. That's cool. Well, thank you so much, Nathan, for that. If people want to reach out to you to learn more about what you're doing, your research, where could they find you or, or reach out to you? Yeah. So I guess I could provide you with my, my personal email is probably the best okay. place where you can find me. Um, I've had this since the seventh grade, so it sounds maybe a little silly, but it's in... For Nathan, W for web and style. So nwstyle at yahoo.com. Gotcha. Um, that is my, um, my my personal email. Um, but but I'm on all the socials. So okay. you, you could find me Nathan Webb on, you know, LinkedIn. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook. I, I'm even on um, 
TikTok uh, and X, you know, so yep. I'm, I'm on all of them. And and as I said earlier, I think I am going to invest more time in building all of those platforms up with with my research and just academia in general. Yeah. And now you got the time back. So now you get the dissertation out the way, you finish school up, and now you get that time back. That's I think sometimes yeah. you know, that's the most valuable part is getting the time back. So I'm super proud of you. Uh, congrats on all the success. And what I'm going to do is put you behind the scenes real quick. And I'm going to wrap up the today's episode. So make sure that you all reach out to uh, Nathan about his work. And probably by the time you see this airing, uh, it will be Dr. Webb. So we're super proud of what he's been able to do. And if you're someone who is looking to get support to get through the process and you're like, yeah, I need this support at this point. Uh, we have a process that works and can support you getting to the finish line. So if you're someone who's interested in learning more about that, you can scan a QR code that is here on your screen, or you can go to www.velocitydissertation.com. Again, it's www.velocitydissertation.com. The whole goal of the Velocity Coaching Program is to help you write and defend your dissertation within one year. So if you're looking to get through and you're tired of spinning around in circles with this process, go ahead and reach out to us to get the help that you need to get to the finish line. And I want to say thank you so much for our partner, HBCU Smart TV, for their support of the work that we're doing at Dunn Dissertation. And as your host, Dr. Ramon Goings, I want to say thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode. I look forward to seeing you all next time on another episode of From ABD to PhD Show. But until next time, let's cheers to a Dunn Dissertation. Take care.